Tiara's breath. You haven't promised too much to Har. This place is incredible. Just wait until you see it in action. Just don't forget, we're here for a purpose. I won't. I'll go talk to Flynn now. We need to find a good place to set up camp. And, um, if you want to talk, you know, about the past, then feel free to come by. In any case, with our new alloys, we should be able to go look for the stones. Let's talk at the forge. Though it might be wise to look for more support first. We don't know what to expect there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Logical prowess remains unripe. Yeah, do you need something? I'm a tad busy. Got it. Ah, Tahar. Seems your men have made themselves comfortable. Yeah, they have. I also have to say, I'm impressed you got the more here to fight on our side. I know there aren't many, but they'll help us greatly. But I'm guessing that's not what you came here for. You want to talk, right? About what I did eight years ago? Why did you do it? Why did you tell my father about my plan? Well, what do you want me to say? I did it because back then, I still believed in your father's vision. What you, Zane, and Helena were going to do, it just seemed, I don't know, wrong. But that doesn't mean it was an easy decision. Also, I didn't think he'd execute you. Probably naive, I know, but it's the truth. You see, I joined Asamo because there was truth in his words. The masks, the pikes, all that hatred against us defilers that the purity of light is spreading now. It was all already there. The people always feared us, simply because we were different. Because we are better than they. Your father, he knew something like that would happen eventually. So he stood up and tried to stop it before it was too late. At least that's what he said. And to be honest, I still don't know if he only lost that vision or had never had it to begin with. I can't believe you're saying this. The reason the people hate us mages now is because of what my father did. He confirmed their fears for them by starting this goddamn war. Oh, really? And what about all that shit that happened beforehand? The witch burnings, mages driven out of the cities, gifted children abandoned by their mothers. Did you just say because we were better? Yes, better. How else should I say it? We cast fire from our hands, heal wounds with a mere thought, so how would you call it? I call it superior, and the ungifted know it as well as we do. But does that mean that we want to kill them? No. We're not animals, we're people, just like they are. Only that we are the lions, they are the cats. We didn't choose to be that way, but it's what nature chose for us. I don't know, but to me it sounds like you're still trying to justify what you did in that war. That's where you're wrong. It's not all black and white, Tahar. And you of all people should know that. I know I made mistakes. And I've spent the past seven years making amends. What else do you think the Wayfarers are for? Why else would I have left? And look, I do not expect you to forgive me. I don't even know if I could do it if I were in your position. I remember that 
Back in the Rebellion, ancient relics such as the Godstones were your speciality. Is there anything interesting you could tell me about them? Interesting? That depends on what you mean by that. I mean, it goes without saying that what this rune allows us to do is beyond fascinating. Apart from that, I could only tell you the things you already know. How both the Hibernians and Shapers worshipped them and harnessed their magic. But that's about it. So, regarding the Wayfarers, you said that you founded them to make amends. Is that true? And if yes, how did you found them? Yes, otherwise I wouldn't have said it. As to how I formed them, it's a long story. And maybe one we should save for later. I want to talk about my father. I figured you'd want to eventually. What is it you want to know? Do you think it's true? But he was simply crazy. Hmm. Towards the end? Yes. He had certainly lost his sanity. But before that, I still don't know. I've said it before, but there's one part of me that likes to think he was a madman to begin with. And then there's the other voice that tells me that he was merely a visionary who had lost his way. But if there's one thing I know, it's that he was a leader. Whenever he spoke to us, it was electric. To this day, I've never seen someone with his charisma. You sound almost nostalgic. Nostalgic? No. It's just... I, I've never met someone with that energy. You have some of it, Tahar. I only started to realize that here. But most of it is still asleep. This might sound strange, but... Do you see any resemblance? between him and me? Interesting that you ask. Yes, there were moments where I could not help but notice that certain... something that strongly reminds me of your father. Could you be a bit more specific? Well, I think that the best way to describe it is a sort of look in your eyes. It's somehow distant, but at the same time driven and intense. And it can be both intimidating and charismatic. I believe that it's this energy that helped your father rally the noble houses and all these mages behind him. And, ironic as it may be, it might help you with our cause, too. My father never told me how he grew up. Do you know anything about that? About his childhood? I'm afraid not. He shared some fragments of his past with me, but probably no more than he shared with you. Let's discuss something else. I'll be off. Interesting. I must say, I am impressed. With Mullendir? Yes. It's quite a sight. I still can't believe we're the first ones who found this place. It seems unlikely, yes, but yet it happened. Isgrim, the dwarf, told me about it. He said that the rock illusion shielding the entrance vanished as soon as you spoke the words, and that it did not react to Isgrim himself. Tell me, Tahar, what do you make of that? Maybe I'm connected to this place. But how? I know there is more to you than meets the eye. Something about you is different, although I cannot say what it is. I believe we stand on the verge of a change. Things have happened, Tahar. Things, the extent of which we have not even come close to comprehending. And they have set something in motion. How do you know this? Are you some kind of medium? A medium? No, quite the opposite. I am an observer. As you have undoubtedly noticed, I lack the, let us call it, emotional intensity most people display in their daily lives. That can be a challenge, but it also allows me a unique perspective on the world. And to me, it is evident that the war your father started has done more than simply given birth to the purity of light. It was the first pebble in what will soon become an avalanche. 
You're talking about the Bloodburn? Among other things, yes. But as I said, there is more to it. All this, your journey, your role in what Rondar Lacane believes to be a vision sent by Aenir. It is only the beginning. But let us continue this discussion when I can give you more than vague semi-prophetic statements. All right. We'll talk later. Why? When? Um, when something comes up. I'll go prepare for our next mission now. Understood. Now, yes, what is it? Where did you grow up? You don't look Nortandian. I do not, that is correct. I grew up in Imperia. Imperia? That's a long way from here. I know, but I hardly have any memories. My parents fled from the Civil War and set over to Nortandra when I was only four years old. So you were refugees? Yes, much like many Nortandians are now. We lived in the Utran lands and my parents are still there. What's it like to live in Nortander as an Empyrean? Well, it was my impression that Utran people are by nature a lot more skeptical towards outsiders than, for example, the citizens of Everlight. All in all, however, I cannot complain. Both my father and my mother found work quite quickly. And thanks to my occupation as first scholar of the Creator's Guild, they now live a quite comfortable life. And when did you discover your magic? At a very early age. I believe I was seven at that time. I must have had an outbreak, but I can hardly remember any of it. All I know is that my mother's employer, who was a mage himself, immediately took me in. I went to Everlight when I was ten, and did not leave there ever since. Until now. Interesting. You're the first Empyrean I've met. I'm not surprised. I've noticed that you use both white and black magic in combat. I've never seen anyone do that before. Don't the two schools exclude each other? Normally, yes. The essence of white and of black magic deeply oppose each other. Trying to combine both of them usually has a similar effect on a mage's mind as adding water onto a patch of burning oil. I, however, never had that problem. The first time I found out was at the Arcane University in Greyfell where I studied. The white magic spell I had cast on a rabbit to heal his wounded paw accidentally killed it. I was very young at that time, and I knew my professor would be upset if he found out, so I channeled my energy on undoing what I had done. As a result, I created an undead rabbit. It immediately went feral, and I put it back to sleep. But rather than feeling the terrible headache that had been described to us as an effect of combining these two schools, I felt a slight sense of, well, exhilaration. I secretly continued these experiments during my studies, and found out that whatever it is that causes this mental discord among normal mages did not affect me. Do you have an explanation for this? No, I do not. Maybe it has to do with the way my mind is structured, or maybe it is a simple coincidence. Huh. Well, that's odd. Goodbye.